But America's emotional ties to Coca-Cola would be strained as never before during 80 fateful days in 1985. What was happening in the mid-80s was the market for sugar cola was a declining market. And so folks for the first time began to question whether or not people had actually become tired of the taste of Coca-Cola, had we finally reached a point a century after its introduction that, you know, maybe folks were just tired of this flavor. The Coca-Cola Company's research and development staff went to work on that question and came up with a surprising answer. They managed to create a new cola flavor that won taste tests hands down, against not only the competition, but the original formula for Coca-Cola. Making a change seemed logical. Well, it's very dangerous to mix logic and, and, uh, and soft drinks together. And uh, I've always believed in an underlying theme about Coke that, that the company and its product do well when the focus is on what Coke is in. And any time you have this pleasant soft drink uh, presented as part of the social fabric, Coke date, a break at work, uh, whatever it might be, that works well for Coke. When the focus turns to what's in Coke, to its ingredients, it's always trouble. When you change the formula, you attack something that has an awful lot of built-up mystique with the American people. But in the mid-80s, those people seemed to want something new. The fateful decision was made late in 1984. Press ahead with a top-secret program to launch a new Coke. It wasn't something that was talked about. It had code names, secret meetings, late-night phone calls, all building up to the introduction of what we believe was the best soft drink on earth, new Coca-Cola. The company's New York ad agency had its employees work their regular shifts, then put in after-hours work at a separate office to make sure no one knew about the change. People working on commercials for the new flavor were told it was just a new packaging design. Even the bottlers weren't let in on the secret until the day before the official public announcement. The big day, April 23, 1985. A day all Coke drinkers would long remember. The Coca-Cola Company CEO, Roberto Gazueta, broke the news at a New York City press conference. The best soft drink, Coca-Cola, is now going to be even better. Simply stated, we have a new formula for Coke. Then came the questions from the press. I mean, are you 100% certain that this won't bomb this new formula? I think, as I said, I think this is the surest move ever because the consumer made it. We didn't. New Coke was launched in a confident blaze of publicity. But public reaction was immediate and negative. All of the taste tests said people preferred the taste of this new product to the century old product. What they hadn't factored in was the huge emotional attachment there was to this brand. One of the things they say is they were only looking at getting people who didn't currently drink Coca-Cola to come to Coca-Cola with a change of taste. That perhaps they maybe didn't focus on the loyal drinkers and what it was going to mean to them. But it wasn't the taste of new Coke that people didn't like. It was the idea of it of changing a constant like Coca-Cola. By mid-May, the Coca-Cola company's Atlanta headquarters had hired extra operators to handle the 5,000 angry calls coming in each day. By June, they were handling 8,000 a day. Just like the soldiers in World War II wrote these love letters about the brand, the American people were astounded 
that we would change the formula for a product that had been part of their lives for almost a century at the time it was introduced. And they told us in no uncertain terms that we shouldn't do that. that we didn't have the right to change the formula of their product. And many of them weren't Coca-Cola drinkers. They're just American citizens who believe that something fundamental that's a part of their society has come under attack. So you can never get away from it, the psychology of Coke. And that's where they made their, their fundamental mistake, as far as I'm concerned. By July, the company had decided that enough was enough and held another press conference. The news about the introduction of Coca-Cola Classic ran on the Dow Jones wire at 3.18 p.m. yesterday. I'm Don Keogh, president of the Coca-Cola Company. When we brought you the new taste of Coke, we knew that millions would prefer it, and millions do. And we knew that it would beat the taste of our major competitor, and it does. What we didn't know was how many thousands of you would phone and write asking us to bring back the classic taste of original Coca-Cola. Well, we read and we listened, and you know the rest. Well, you know, there are a handful of conspiracy theorists who think New Coke was a deliberate marketing ploy to...